Before putting in a rectal tube, please refer to the policy and procedure. Uh, to find the policy and procedure, you're going to have to search for Flexiseal. And once you do, you'll see the policy right over here. It's called Flexiseal Fecal Management System. Now, the purpose of a rectal tube is to help our patients that have little or no bowel control with the liquid or semi-liquid stool that they're having. So a patient that will probably benefit from having a rectal tube is a C. diff patient because they tend to have watery stool and they tend not to be able to control it. Now I'd like to emphasize the rectal tube will only work if the stool is liquid or semi-liquid. If it's formed or soft, it just won't go through the tubing. Now, the patient population that can have a rectal tube are adult patients only. They must be 18 years or older. Who can insert a rectal tube? RNs can, but they need a doctor's order and there are contraindications to having a rectal tube. I suggest that you pause the video and read through these contraindications. I also suggest that prior to inserting a rectal tube that you go through this list with the provider. Now before we move on to the instructional video, I'd like to emphasize that five minute procedure. And it says, fill syringe with 45 ml of sterile water. Now in the instructional video, it's gonna say, you can use saline or tap water. That's incorrect. As per hospital policy, we must only use sterile water. In addition to the device kit, you will need gloves, lubricating jelly, saline or tap water, and an incontinence pad. When removing the device from its packaging, check to see if there is any residual air in the balloon. If so, remove it by attaching the syringe provided to the inflation port and withdrawing the plunger. Prior to filling with water or saline, ensure that the syringe is empty by expelling any air. Next, fill the syringe with 45 ml of tap water or saline and attach it to the white inflation port. Do not overfill beyond 45 ml. Securely snap the collection bag to the connector at the end of the catheter. Place patient in the left sideline position with the hips flexed. This position best aids in performing a digital rectal assessment. If this is not possible, you may determine an alternative position enabling access to the rectum. If fecal impaction is felt, do not insert the device and alert the ordering healthcare professional of your findings. Unfold the length of the catheter to lie flat on the bed. Extend the collection bag connector towards the foot of the bed alongside of the patient. The soft low pressure balloon is designed to reduce the risk of tissue necrosis. Once inserted and inflated, the retention balloon retains the device inside the patient. It conforms to the sphincter anatomy to create an effective seal to minimize leakage and to safely divert and contain stool. In place, the drainage tube collapses to an 8 millimeter diameter, minimizing the impact on sphincter tone. The retention balloon has a blue finger pocket that is easy to locate and designed for simple finger insertion. This is a unique feature, available only on FlexiSeal Signal FMS devices. It is designed to guide easy insertion and confirm proper device placement for the caregiver and helps ensure patient comfort using a one finger insertion technique. You can locate the finger pocket by moving your finger along the irrigation line starting from the blue irrigation port up to the balloon. The finger pocket is located above the position indicator line. To make it easier to insert and remove your finger from the finger pocket, you should first coat your gloved insertion finger with a lubricating jelly. Then insert your gloved insertion finger into the pocket. Also roll the balloon end of the catheter in lubricating jelly so that it is well coated and then smooth the jelly evenly for ease of insertion. Using the finger in the pocket of the balloon, Gently insert the balloon through the anal sphincter until the balloon is beyond the external orifice and well inside the rectal vault. Inflate the balloon with up to a maximum of 45 ml of tap water or saline by slowly depressing the syringe plunger. Under no circumstances should the balloon be inflated with more than 45 ml. While depressing the syringe, 
Take note of the signal indicator previously discussed. Once the retention balloon has reached the optimal fill level, or 45 ml has been injected, the signal indicator will pop. The signal indicator will remain popped while the balloon is at its optimal level. Once the signal indicator pops, stop filling the retention balloon and detach the syringe from the inflation port and gently tug on the catheter to ensure that the balloon is properly positioned against the rectal floor. This will also ensure that the stool will flow into the catheter instead of around it. Then position the length of the flexible silicone catheter along the patient's leg, avoiding kinks and obstruction. If the patient's condition allows, reposition the patient on his back and position the catheter between the legs, ensuring the patient is not lying on the catheter so there is no compression or twisting. Alternative positions should be at the clinician's discretion depending on patient need. Hang the bag by the plastic beaded strap on the bedside at a position lower than that of the patient's rectum to aid in stool flow. Take note of the position indicator line relative to the patient's anus. You should observe changes in the location of the position indicator line as a means to determine movement of the retention balloon in the patient's rectum. This may indicate the need for the balloon or device to be repositioned. The Since small amounts of moisture or seepage around the catheter can be anticipated, we recommend using an incontinence pad at all times. Patients with very weak sphincter muscles may not be able to hold the device in place and may experience increased leakage of stool. If the silicone catheter becomes blocked with solid particles, it can be rinsed by filling the syringe with room temperature tap water, attaching the syringe to the blue irrigation port and depressing the plunger. Ensure the syringe is not inadvertently attached to the white balloon inflation port marked 45 ml. Irrigation amounts may vary depending on the amount of solid particles. If the patient's condition allows, place the patient in the left line side position with the hips flexed to facilitate solid particle flow into the catheter during the irrigation process. You should repeat the procedure as often as necessary to maintain proper functioning of the device. Flushing the device as described is an optional procedure for use only when needed to maintain the unobstructed flow of stool into the collection bag. Periodically, you may want to gently milk the catheter to facilitate the flow. FlexiSeal Signal FMS is a simple and closed system. All parts are disposable and designed for single patient use. The closed end collection bag helps prevent the spread of infection, such as C. difficile. The collection bags have a charcoal filter and are designed to contain and lock in odor, similar to the material construction of the Convitec ostomy care pouches. FlexiSeal Signal FMS also has an elbow bag connector for easy operation. The connector includes a hook that interfaces with the collection bag, adding an additional layer of security. Before changing the collection bag, put on non-sterile gloves. To begin the bag changing process, rest the elbow bag connector on its side on a protective incontinence pad. Also make sure you have a replacement collection bag within close reach. Carefully unsnap the soiled pouch and securely snap the cap to the pouch to contain the stool. Snap the clean pouch to the elbow bag connector and position the unit to the location where gravity drainage has worked the best. There are three charcoal filter collection bags in each kit, and additional bags can be ordered separately as needed. Snap the cap onto each used bag and discard according to institutional protocol for disposal of medical waste. Observe the device regularly for obstructions from kinks, solid fecal particles, or external pressure. To remove the catheter from the rectum, reposition the patient in a left side line position with hips flexed and deflate the retention balloon by attaching the syringe to the white inflation port and slowly withdraw all water from the balloon. Remember, 
the soft, flexible catheter is capable of collapsing to a very small 8 mm diameter. This ability to collapse to an 8 mm diameter helps ensure patient comfort during removal and helps to prevent prolonged dilation of the sphincter, helping minimize the risk of loss of sphincter tone. Disconnect the syringe and discard according to your facility protocol. Hold the catheter as close to the patient as possible and slowly slide it out of the anus. Dispose of the device in accordance with your institutional protocol for disposal of medical waste. Thank you for joining me for the introduction to the FlexiSeal Signal Fecal Management System. This system is appropriate for patients with little or no bowel control and liquid or semi-liquid stool. When the stool begins to become solid, device should be discontinued. FlexiSeal Signal FMS can be used up to 29 consecutive days. I hope you found this session helpful in learning how to use FlexiSeal Signal FMS.